Well, good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Brian Novak. Welcome to all members, and a special welcome to any guests that we have with us today. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, the, um, what was I going to say? Thursday, the 12th, we have a joint combining of the men's group and the evening guild, but all are welcome. You don't have to be a member of either one. Um, we're going to have a guest speaker, uh, Mr. the newly appointed circuit judge, Mr. Jeremy Walker, and he will be talking about the Illinois Act, the Safe T Act. I haven't heard anything about it or looked into it, but I'm looking forward to what he has to say about it. So you feel free to come and join us for that. Uh, Pastor Nebel is not here today. Um, he is the weekend off somewhat off. He's doing the, gets the pleasure and the honor of baptizing his grandson today over in St. Louis. So God's blessings to him. Uh, we have on your way out baby bottles, not for you, but uh, the idea is for Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, uh, which is January 22nd. The idea is you take the bottle home and through the month of January, you toss your loose change in it and then you bring the bottle back the first week and the first weekend in February, which is the fourth and fifth, and we'll collect the bottles and then we'll make take all that change and make a don the donation to the Life Network for their to support them. Also, uh, note that Thursday is the men's meeting with Jeremy, and then Friday we have Family Fun Night. So from 7 to 9, so feel free to come and join us with games and so forth and have fun with that. So with all that, God's blessings on your worship. We can start with our opening hymn, hymn 409, Hail our source of every blessing, hymn 409.
we follow the service of divine service setting to this week found on page 167 if you want to follow along in the hymnal page 167 please stand if you are able we begin our worship service as we do all our services in the remembrance of our baptism and our triune God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And hear the great news that Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our intro it. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above, for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who worship, offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We pray in unison. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading appointed for this, the Baptism of Our Lord Sunday, is recorded for us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, beginning at verse 1. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak the words of the gradual. Praise the Lord, all nations. 
watchful of him all peoples, for great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. The epistle reading is recorded for us in the book of Romans, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died in sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Alleluia in verse. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. And behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We recite our common confession in the Nicene Creed, found on page 174 or in the back of your hymnal. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son, Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory 
to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 404, Jesus once with sinners numbered, hymn 404. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon is based on the Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11 that we just heard, under the title, If it's not the, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not the if or the then, it's the when that matters. It's not the if or then, 
It's the that when that matters. If and then, two simple words, although left by themselves, if and then, are likely words leaving us wanting more. If I had more money, if I knew more things, if I read the Bible more often, or then he was arrested, then she drove away, or the more popular, then they lived happily ever after. Now these two words can be used in combination with one another to form a conditional sentence. When this happens, they provide us with the increased information that we seek. For example, if we had more time in our days, then maybe we'd be able to accomplish the tasks that have been set before us. Or maybe you're like me and you think, if the Chicago Cubs would just win another World Series again, then I would be happy. And I would have something to gloat about to all of you Cardinal fans. Or maybe, more importantly, being that we are in church, if I could get, just get everyone in the world to listen to me and come to believe and trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then the world might be a better place. Yet, conditional sentences can provide us with too much information, information that can start leading us to asking more questions, questions we don't need to be asking. These questions can lead us into some dark places, places we don't want to be, places where we might find ourselves questioning even our faith. Questions like, if it was Adam and Eve that sinned, then why do we have to pay for what they did? If God would have just answered my prayers, then I wouldn't be in the situation I am right now. Or, if we would have listened to and obeyed what God commands of us, then we wouldn't have done those things. You know, those things that make our God angry. Things we shouldn't do. Things we cannot be doing. Where are you in your life journey? If you haven't been the person God has called you to be, then what are you going to do about it? Where is your life journey headed? In today's text from Romans chapter 6, we find ourselves in the middle of a conversation. And we know the middle is no place to start. No, to gain insight and understanding into what's going on, we need the full story. As we look back, we end up at the beginning of the book of Romans. As we review chapters 1 through 5, we gain the insight and understanding we're looking for. We know that this is a conversation that the Apostle Paul is having as he writes a letter to the Romans. In this conversation,